my very first YouTube video. I'm so excited to be filming this right now. So excited to be starting this channel and really honestly just so grateful that you're watching it right now from wherever you are in the world. If you don't know who I am, and I'm sure most of you don't because this channel is brand new, my name is Beth Moore and I am 24 years old. I live in Waterloo, Ontario with my husband, Jared. We've been married for two years and we also have a little one-year-old teacup multi-poo named Max who is I think like three and a half pounds now, full grown. He is really something else. I'm sure that you'll see him in these videos at some point, if not hear him. I've kind of got him like preoccupied with toys right now. So he um, shouldn't make much noise in this video, but we're just gonna roll with it and see how it goes. Um, but I'm so excited that you're watching this video today. I know that you could be doing anything with your time right now, and so I'm honored that this is how you're spending it. Um, I'm someone that at the end of the day loves to watch YouTube videos on all of the things that I'm interested in, like general lifestyle and beauty stuff, and this channel is one that's going to be a mix of a lot of things as well. I'm going to be talking a lot about faith, which is such an important thing in my own life. Um, just other lifestyle things like fashion and beauty and food, um, marriage and relationships, interior design, all of these different things that I'm interested in. And I hope that they can be interesting to you guys as well. One of the things that I would love for you to do is to comment who you are, where you're watching from, and maybe even what you would like to see on this channel before you go. I'm really excited to just get to know you guys and have a little bit of a community on here. And so feel free to do that. Um, but I would also love for you to follow me over on Instagram. My handle there is at Beth Grace Moore. And again, over there, introduce yourself. Let me know what you want to see on this channel. Um, before we dive in, make sure that you subscribe before you leave today. If you like this video, share it with a friend. I would just super uh, appreciate that. But I'm so excited that you are here. And without any further ado, let's get started. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a little bit of a q and A. I I put a question sticker on Instagram a couple weeks back so you guys could ask me anything. And I'm gonna be answering some of those today. I originally was filming this on my like actual filming camera and had my phone with me to like read through the questions, but my camera just died and the memory card was full. Perfect. So I am filming this now on my iPhone actually. Shout out to iPhone XR. I hope that this doesn't look like an iPhone, but I mean, who's to say because iPhones are great quality these days anyway. Um, but I have like an old school notebook to read these off of. So don't mind that. And we're just going to roll with it and see how this goes. And I hope that you guys enjoy this video. So the first question is this, what did you study in university? Uh, so I went to a university in Waterloo called Wilfrid Laurier University and I studied business there. Um, I actually specialized in marketing and brand communication and I, while I enjoyed, I think like the overall university and like school experience, the program was like super challenging for me because I'm not someone that's good at math at all. And I got into that program and like genuinely didn't have any idea how much math it was going to be. So I didn't end up like actually being able to take any of the marketing or like branding courses that I wanted to take until the final two years. But when I did get to take those, I honestly loved them. I had kind of known that I wanted to go into marketing since I was like 15. It was, I think grade 10 that I first realized like how much I really loved marketing and was interested in it. And I have been in the field of marketing ever since. The next question is this, what is your Enneagram type? Um, so I am an Enneagram three wing four. If you don't know what the Enneagram is, it's a personality test that kind of plots you on these nine different personality types, which doesn't sound like a lot, but honestly, like take the test if you haven't taken it. For me, it was like so telling of my own personality and like really accurately described who I am. Um, I'm an Enneagram three wing four, and I think that that is called like the professional or the expert or something like that. But basically the three side of me is the dominant side. And that's the side of me that's very like achievement oriented and driven and wanting to get stuff done and like always just kind of looking at like what's the next thing. And the four side of me is the side that's more like introspective and appreciates all things beauty and like appreciating basically just like not the aesthetic things in life, but pretty close to that. And um, it's a fun combination. I think it is what makes me 
I'm a little bit more creative and that's kind of the tendency that I go towards but it can also be hard for me because when you are like so achievement driven but you also really like things to be like excellent and well done it can kind of stifle you from doing literally anything which is one of the reasons why for so long I didn't start a YouTube channel but working on it obviously it's a cool way to be able to kind of identify where your personality is and to make steps to actually get better as a person next question is this what is your biggest pet peeve um i feel like my biggest pet peeve is probably just like mess in general like having dishes in the sink laundry like all over the house and honestly like that's just real life and so that's been one of the things like even getting married and having another person that I'm living with now that is also responsible for this mess, that was a hard thing for me of just like being able to be okay with mess sometimes and knowing that things don't need to be like put together all the time. Um, but I do, I find that I get like more influenced by my environment. And so if it's like very chaotic in our house, like I feel like that very easily um, impacts my attitude for the day and kind of like my emotions and so that's why I tend to keep things tidy I just feel like like messy house messy brain so that's probably my pet peeve and one thing that I'm actively working on getting better at the next question is this what is the last book that you read um, so the last book that I read was called American Dirt. Off of the top of my head, I can't remember the author of it, but it was a summer read for me and it was so good. It was a little bit intense, so if you're someone that is like easily put off by like gore or violence, and not to say that it's like so terrible, but it was very similar to the story of Breaking Bad, like in a book, and it kind of talks about um, a woman whose family and her situation, she's kind of got caught up with the Mexican drug cartel. And so it kind of follows along with what her situation ends up becoming and what it means for her um, family. And it's such a good book. I won't spoil any of it, but that is definitely a really good one that I would recommend. Um, and then the next book or the next question was, what is a book that's left an impact on your life? Um, for this, there's a couple. I would say that the first one, just because it's the freshest that I've read, was uh, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by Mark, John Mark Comer. Um, I was gifted that book back in 2019 and it was like such a good time to get it because it was right before we went into 2020, which has obviously been like such a crazy year for so many of us. But this book really talks about um, the art of like slowing down in life and decluttering your schedule and your calendar and making time for really just rest and the kind of the end of like hustle culture and all of these things that were so um, just quick to praise in our society today and so that was a great book for me going into the year because I had this mindset of like I want to slow down this year like I don't want to have as many things on the calendar I don't want to fill my time just for the sake of filling it like I want to do what is actually um, enriching to others and enriching to me and the relationships that I have in my relationship with God and so that was a really great book for me to read I would totally recommend it for you if you haven't read it yet um, and then the second book that I would say is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. That is an also just amazing book on leadership and communication and the way that you interact with people in general. So those would be my top two books to recommend. The next question is this, what is your dream vacation? So I would say probably um, Santorini in Greece. And it's funny because Jared actually has the same dream location spot. And when we first started dating, we were both just like, it was one of the first things that I remember we had talked about. Like, if you could go anywhere, where would you go? And we both said Santorini. And so we were like, oh, let's go there for our honeymoon one day when we get married. And we actually ended up going to, to Thailand for our honeymoon. Long story short, Jared used to live there in high school. And so for me, I wanted to go and just kind of see that part of his life before we um, kind of didn't have the opportunity to take the time to do that again. So we went for a month and it was fabulous, but Santorini is still on our bucket list and we will definitely go someday when we can travel again. Next question is this, how do you stay so upbeat when life gets busy? This is a great question, but I would first just start with prefacing it by saying that I don't always stay so upbeat. Like there are days that I come home and I'm so tired and I'm honestly just like the worst person to be around and Jared could attest to that. But I would say that 
I have worked hard over the last year, especially to just be careful with my schedule and what I've said yes to and making sure that the things that I'm doing in life are actually the things that are the right thing for me to be doing in that season, if that makes sense. A few years ago, I read a book um, called The Best Yes, and it's by an author called Lisa Tukurst, who I absolutely love. But in this book, she talks about this concept of your best yes. And basically, the, the concept is that every single time you say yes to something, it means that you're simultaneously saying no to something else, whether that's consciously or subconsciously. So for example, if I say yes to hanging out with a friend after work, it means that I'm also saying no to spending that extra time with my husband that night. And so when you're creating a life and designing a schedule for yourself, at the end of the day, everything that you say yes to means that you're saying no to something else. And so you want to get the most important things in your schedule, like time with your, with God and with your family and friends and exercise and taking care of yourself and, and all these different types of things. And so I am someone that is pretty busy. Like I, I have a full-time job, I'm married, I have a puppy. Um, I am very involved and active in the church that Jared and I go to. Um, I do freelance work on the side for marketing. I'm starting a YouTube channel. I oftentimes do um, one-off brand deals just to help small businesses over Instagram. And so it can easily become very busy and very cluttered. But I do follow pretty closely this concept of the best yes when I come into a new season and I just say, God, what is, what is it that you want me to do in this season? How can I honor you the most with my time and with my energy and my resources and honor others as well? And so I would just say that when you, when you know that you have said yes to the right things for that season, that there's a grace for you in it and it allows you to do that season, even though it might be really busy, with a positive attitude and on the days that you don't have a positive attitude which sometimes happens to me um just being real you can come back to the fact that like no i know that this is my best yes right now i know that this investment is important i know that god has graced me for it i know that he can grow my capacity and give me the strength to do it well and so that's what i say would say that i come back to on those days when i am feeling really busy and just not upbeat at all is this concept of the best yes. And so I hope that that is helpful to you and that you can implement that in your own life as well. The next question is this, any tips for single gals in the waiting period? Um, yes, I would say for this, I would share some advice that my sister gave me when I was also in the waiting period and had just gotten out of a bad breakup before I met Jared. and. Honestly, I was just feeling so discouraged. And a part of it for me was a little bit of jealousy and comparison because my sister was in this really great relationship and she had met this Christian guy and they really loved each other. And I could tell that it was going on the trajectory of marriage and that this was a great thing. And so for myself at that time, it was just like, God, like when is that gonna happen for me? Like, what is what does it look like to end up in this position? How do you even meet somebody like that? And what my sister encouraged me in is just in that time where you are by yourself, take it to just pour into your relationship with God. Use that extra time that you have because honestly, girls, like being in a relationship takes a ton of time. Like it takes energy, it takes attention, it takes focus. And that's all time on your calendar that you may not necessarily have available anymore once you are in a relationship. And don't get me wrong, it's all fabulous and it's great. And I wouldn't trade that for the world, but when you are single, you have this extra time to invest into your relationship with God and invest into yourself that you may not necessarily have when you are in a relationship and you lose a little bit of that time. And so I just spent so much time reading my Bible, journaling, reading devotionals, reading books just on what it means to be a woman of faith and, and how to actually grow in all of these areas. And during that time, I just felt like such a contentment with the season that I was in, such a contentment in my relationship with God, knowing that any guy that was to come into the picture would really just be the cherry on top. He wasn't gonna complete me. I had already had that full sense of completion in my relationship with God and in who I was in him. And so I knew that anyone that came along would just be a gift. It would just be 
an addition to my life rather than something that would come and kind of close the gap that I had in my heart at that time. And so I would just say, take that time and pour into your relationship with God. And honestly, it's going to give you a great foundation for the time that someone does come along because you'll have the discernment at that point to be able to know if this person is on your level when it comes to faith and if it's as important to them as it is to you. And so I would really just say to honestly not wish the time away, but just use it and invest it and be wise with it. And God will totally honor that in you. So the next question is how do you know when a friendship is toxic? This is a really interesting question. Um, and I think like it's so interesting to me because of the word toxic and this word that we use and kind of um, can quickly paint people or situations or relationships with um, when we may not necessarily even know what toxic means or what it means to us. And what I mean by that is I think that in this like cancel culture society that we live in, it's really easy for us to write people off right now. And toxic to a lot of us basically is just like this person doesn't meet my expectations and to me that's toxic. And I think that that thinking is actually toxic and we need to be careful with it because just because someone is not able to meet our expectations doesn't mean that they're a toxic friend or uh, it's a toxic relationship or any of these kinds of things. I think when we're thinking about toxicity, we need to think about things like abuse, whether that's verbal or physical or sexual, um, or people that are actually actively pushing us away from the person that God has called us to be or the person that we want to become in general. If you're noticing that the time that you're spending around these people is actually detracting from, from your life and from your faith, and not to say that it's all about like relationships feeding into us and pouring into us, and then if it doesn't feed into me to just write it off, but there is something to be said about the people that you're spending most of your time with because it's so true that like, show me your, your friends and I'll show you your future or you're a product of the people that you spend most of your time with. And so it's really important that we are making sure that the people we spend most of our time with are either pointing us back to God. And if you're not someone that is um, uh, actively engaging in the Christian faith, someone that is helping you become a better version of yourself. If you're noticing that those people around you are not doing that, then don't spend most of your time with them. But it doesn't mean that they're toxic as a person. It doesn't mean that you need to write them off. It doesn't mean that you need to quote unquote cancel them. It may mean that you need to pray for them, encourage them, help connect them with other people. But I do think it's important that we're careful with the way that we kind of label this, um, this word toxic on different relationships and friendships. Boundaries is so important. And honestly, just being able to be okay with with talking to people and saying hey like i i'm not available to hang out with you right now or just giving yourself the grace to um put your foot down a little bit and just say like i'm in control of my own life like i don't need to be around this person all the time i don't need to respond to their text messages all the time you have the power to actually do that in your own life and so i think that once you um recognize that and give yourself the grace to do that it's really easy to kind of distance yourself from those people and to start to create better relationships that actually do help you to become the person that god called you to be so the last question is this what is your dream life no limitations this is a fun question um what is my dream life i feel like if i had to paint a picture of like what my dream life would be it's not honestly anything crazy I would probably see Jared and I in like a bigger farm style house with a wraparound porch and like property for dogs and kids to run around on. Obviously kids are, are something that I want to see in our future and are part of our dream future. Um, I would probably be writing or doing something else creative for work, but also very actively involved in the church. Um, Jared and I would be strong in our marriage. My relationships with my kids would be strong. I feel like honestly at the end of the day, that's all that I like really want from life is to know that I have a, a great marriage that people can look to as an example of what it looks like to um, have God at the center of a marriage. Um, I'd want my kids to feel like they can open up to me and like that relationship with, is, um, with them is strong. And like as long as I am able to be a part of, of church and of pouring into people and to um, really making Jesus 
uh, in his name known, I feel like that's all that's really required in my, my dream picture of life. And honestly, I hope that that's not so far off for myself. Like I hope that I could even watch this video like 10, 15 years from now and see that I'm like further along the line of like actually being able to achieve some of those things that I am even today. And so, yeah, I would say that that's probably what my dream life is. Well, thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope that it encouraged you and in that quick Q&A there was something that either inspired you or stuck with you and I'm honestly just so excited for all the videos that are going to be on this channel. There's another one that's coming out really soon that I'm excited for you guys to watch. But again, I would love for you to let me know what type of content you want to see. So feel free to follow me on Instagram. My username there is at Beth Grace Moore. Follow along and let me know what you're interested in seeing on this YouTube channel. But I would also love for you before you leave today to hit subscribe and just stay tuned for everything that's to come on this channel. I think that we're gonna have a lot of fun together in the months and years to come. So have a great day and I'll see you next time.